All right. So, um, welcome back to the second part. Sure. Don't um, I will start by shortly just summarizing the time that we saw last time because it was already four weeks ago, so it's uh, maybe good to uh, a little uh, reminder. So, um, so if you remember, uh, last time we spent some time discussing a bit of topology, which uh, is a bit uh, beyond uh, actually what, what we really need. But um, okay, an important point was uh, if we consider a model like the, the low energy QCD, so nonlinear sigma model with a, it is in this form of phi square root four trace of u u u dagger with u being a SUN matrix, let's say SU2 at the moment. You just take the two uh, lightest flavors of quark. Um, when you have a field that is like this, there is, a, there is an interesting uh, object actually to construct, which is the integral over space of, uh, let me normalize this. And then the trace of u dagger e i u d j u dagger and k u. And this this thing, which is called the winding number integral, takes values in the set of uh, integers. So whatever field you put inside here, classically you, you will get you compute this integral, you get you get a number. And uh, so this this shows that there is an non-trivial topology if you want in uh, in this. Um, and you said to build these topological objects, you always need an epsilon tensor. Well, you, you need an epsilon tensor um, uh, to make uh, this. I mean, the, the role of the epsilon tensor, if you want, is, is just by by saying if you take the variation of this with the the field sorry, the field u. Basically, you will remove one of, uh, of uh, this thing and... Uh, so it vanishes. The, it, it will vanish, exactly. It the will vanish is. because uh, you will get uh, two derivative axioms on the same u, which contracted with an epsilon tensor vanishes. Otherwise, there is no way to, to build something that, that, is a, that has a zero uh, variation. Right? But the opposite is not true. So I understand this way you get zero variation, but it's not that... Strictly in the natural tensor. Well, with one epsilon tensor, it's actually the only term you can write. Because if you close the trace differently, you always get zero. You have, uh, you have to buy uh, to buy a bit this, this term. No, no, but uh, it's mathematically very interesting. And so, um, yeah, what we saw is that one way to, okay. Of course, usually what you do in physics, you see the vacuum is, is of course, when u is, is uh, you know, u can be prioritized as the, the phi on like this. And uh, when all the pi fields are zero, u is the identity, and then this thing is, is zero. So the, the usual vacuum has, has zero winding number. And then what you, we do in general is we quantize around this vacuum, and uh, it's quantum field theory the way the way we are used to. But now there are there are other um, field configurations that have a different winding number, and then we cannot do. Uh, I mean, if you prepare a field in this configuration, it will stay with winding number one. There is no way to uh, to get rid of this this quantity because it's topological. And the way uh, we did it was uh, using this uh, edge of Gansatz, was saying take the exponential of some function of r times basically the angle. And this, with this ansatz, um, with the boundary condition for this function f to be f of 0 in pi and f of infinity. Maybe zero, we would, uh, we would find a configuration that has exactly one here. And um, yeah, 
And the point is, if you plug this thing into uh, this Lagrangian, uh, there will be a, there will be a problem because you cannot you cannot find a, a function that will, that minimize the energy here. This uh, this thing is not. Uh, I mean, you can see it directly if you want by by. Uh, Look, I mean, looking at this, if you take the function f of r, or uh, if you take another, the function f of uh, some multiple of r, you will get two solutions that will both be uh, the solution and with different energy. So basically, there is no way to, to have a finite. Uh, you don't have skernions in this Lagrangian, actually. Even if you find something like this, minimizing, uh, I mean, solving uh, this for the function f will give you a function that, uh, that is uh, zero everywhere. You cannot have this boundary condition. But they always lie on the terms in the, in the Carroll Lagrangian that are there. We don't consider them usually because we do a low energy uh, theory. And there are two derivatives here, which is already a order p squared. But in principle, you have terms with four derivatives. And those, those might be important. And there is one term that uh, is the one there. Uh, it is called the skern term. I will write it in this way. Um, with the commit, so for the relatives and um, and the commutator, I uh, write it in this way so that it's, it's obvious that it's anti-symmetric. Yeah. In lower indices, so there is no, uh, we we'll have only uh, two time derivatives from, from this term. But can you just add that term without? With you can add this, in principle, you have other ones. The, this or term other is. Or p to the fourth. Other? Other p to the fourth terms. Yes, you, so why do for s 2 you have only uh, two, two terms actually. And the other one is um, is the one that is totally symmetric in uh, lower indices. So and, and it turns out that from large n consideration, this one is more important. Plus, when you have uh, when you have this, this thing, what we were getting last time is uh, is that you can rewrite this this Lagrangian as uh, some part that is uh, positive plus something proportional to the the winding number. So, but can you make all correlation function finite at that order? So if you do one loop uh, for the three level action then. Uh, from the p to the p square action. Now. Can can you make all correlation functions finite? No, this theory is not renormalizable. Eh? So no, no, but order by order in p square. So now you start doing loops with the p square action and get p to the four divergences, and these are usually removed by three level insertions of the p to the four. Yes. Because okay. If you just neglect one of them, maybe you can you can make all the correlation. I don't know. It's a good question, but um, the only thing I know is that theoretically this term is, is larger yeah. than, uh, the, one than, one than the, the other one. For C two, I mean we're I mean, for C one you have you have even more you have three differences. Three you say large n. Well, okay. And C two is not too large. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. No. Sure. No, that's true. That's true. Okay, but then uh, what we are finding, sorry, this is not the quality, is that the energy of the field configuration given by by this uh, by uh, field u is uh, bigger than six pi squared times these uh, these uh, winding numbers. So when you have a field that is winding number one like this one, you know that sorry, this is f pi over e is this dimensionless coupling that uh, is this curve coupling that. For historical reason, is defined on one one over e squared. So the point was that if you have some some field configuration that has some winding number, it is Lagrangian. It, it will have a, an energy that is bigger than uh, than zero, basically. Right? Okay. And um, what we we saw is that uh, yeah, this thing looks like uh, this function is going to infinity uh, to zero at infinity, so to the vacuum, basically. <coughs> this field U is going to the vacuum at infinity, so it's it's a very localized uh, object, if you want, that has that has a finite uh, energy, and uh, so it looks like something that could be interesting. I mean, it looks like a particle. And today, what uh, what we'll do is uh, 
look a bit into more details into this Lagrangian and, and do the quantization of, uh, of this theory and uh, see that indeed these uh, solitons correspond to, um, to uh, physical states, namely the, the, the baryons. Hmm. Okay. One more last question. Yes. Can you post your notes? Yes, the first part is already online, the second I didn't scan it yet. Where did you post it? On the, on, the, on the CP3 page. Um, very good. So the first thing uh, we'll do today is actually uh, argue a little bit about QCD, that this Lagrangian is not uh, all we need for, for low energy QCD. And the reason is uh, is actually that there is a symmetry in this in this thing. I mean, there are a number of symmetries. First of all, there is this Lagrangian is invariant under the, the parity. There is this uh, P zero symmetry if you want. We take x to minus x, and this is a symmetry of this Lagrangian. It's just because the, all the derivatives comes are contracted with uh, with uh, um, the metric, so they come to always a factor of two. The only way to break parity is to have an epsilon. Mark. Yes. Stupid question. When you say uh, this is a squared, you mean multiplied by the immediate conjugate, right? Yes. Well, no. Well, the, the, the square is just if you want the indices, you have to take them out. Yeah. Mm. So the daggers are only on the ones that are not taking the derivative of. Yes, yes. Okay. Because you always need to, to take a u dagger and then a u and a u dagger and a u to preserve the symmetry. Of the, you cannot have u square. This, this Lagrangian does this, this s u and left, s u and right symmetry actually, that is only broken to the diagonal by the, the value of u. It's a fancy way of writing it if you want to. This is a. Because you can always use the identity that u dagger d mu u is minus d mu u yeah. dagger u, basically, because of unitarity. So you can always reshuffle, you can get rid of, of all the u's. As soon as you have more than, than one u alone without a derivative in a term, you can reshuffle and, and, and cancel it by unitarity. Sorry, that's integration by parts. No, not even. Uh, this is, it's, there is, you don't even make an assumption about it. This, this is just, well, it, well, it is if you want. No, it, well, no, it's not even integration by parts. It's just saying that the derivative of u dagger u is zero. Because that's one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is one. It, this is, uh, it's, it's even, I mean, integration by parts, you have to assume that you're in the vacuum at infinity. This is even more, uh, it's even more uh, yeah. simple if you want. Okay, it's, it's a fancy way of, of uh, denoting this, uh, writing this Lagrangian, but it's the same. I mean. yeah. So the, you have this disparity symmetry, and then there is another symmetry, which is maybe a less, bit less obvious to see. Is there is a symmetry that uh, Milton calls minus one to the power uh, number of boson, which is the uh, symmetry that exchanges u and u dagger. And from this term it's obvious, from this term it's much less obvious, but um, yeah, it's an exercise for you. You just have to use what, what they were saying, actually. And, uh, and so this, this thing corresponds in terms of the pi on, right, to say that pi of x goes to minus pi of x. Okay. Um, yes, and, and since you have this symmetry, you would always have a, an even number of by in whatever when you expand this Lagrangian. So the number of bosons is actually conserved by this symmetry. Uh, it's what it's called minus one to the power AD. Good. And uh, actually this thing you know is not a good symmetry because you have a, a physical process that, that happens is, is uh, k on k plus k minus going into uh, pi plus pi minus pi zero. And this is a physical process that is observed and uh, that cannot be described by this theory. So this is a, this is a problem. And uh, the thing is, we know what the, the, the right symmetry should be, actually. We know from, uh, from experiments beyond that the pions are pseudo-scalar. So the symmetry we would like is, is, uh, we want is, is uh, the, the correct parity is something to say that phi of x 
is going to minus pi of minus x. The conjugation of these two, uh, these two symmetries is a, is a physical uh, symmetry, but not, not both of them separately. Yeah. To describe that process, you should have S3. You, yeah, exactly. exactly. Let's, let me put it back in. Actually, whatever, everything I'm going to say is, is for SUN independently of, of N. So this is a strong, it's not, there are no weak interactions there. There are no weak interactions. This is pure, uh, purely strong. Of course, when you have weak interaction, you could uh, yeah, get, uh, get something. But if you want from, from the, we know the NLI theory of this. It's a theory of quarks. And from this, we know the, the parity transformation of, uh, of pi. I mean, we know that the parity is not a, is not a good theory of the, of the strong. Uh, no, strong interactions are. QCD, pi is a good symmetry. The way it's like a weak interaction for any pi. Okay, but okay. But QCD is pi, the vector. Well, in principle, if you have a theta angle, the, yeah. which is and there, I mean, you cannot get rid. I mean, the, the true vacuum is the theta vacuum. So, yeah. in general, the, Parity is not a good thing, but let's not go too deep to this. The point is, uh, okay. What if you want, let's look at the equation of motion uh, of this of this theory. Basically, the equation of, the equation of, of motion is is basically is uh, f pi squared over two times uh, u the, the derivative of this plus i order terms. I don't want to do this because it's, uh, it's big. Is equal to zero. Actually, it's the derivatives in, in the parentheses, right? When you take this, this thing. So this is the equation of motion, and so this is preserve all these uh, these two symmetries that, that are uh, written here. You see, if you replace u and u dagger, actually, what you can do is multiply. The whole thing with the with the u dagger on the left and the u on the right, and you get the same equation. So, uh, although it's not obvious, it, this is really a symmetry of this equation. Okay, uh, and what we would like actually is to not have this thing. So, the only way there is one thing we could add in the equation of motion is basically to add something with an epsilon tensor, right? So epsilon nu nu rho sigma, whatever I could write with this will break parity. And uh, here are four indices, so I can write four derivatives. Mu nu dagger d rho u d sigma u dagger trace. Uh, no trace, sorry. Let's say with some position t around that. This would be a very nice uh, equation of motion for, for the physical uh, theory because then we break this symmetry and we break this one, but actually we preserve the, this symmetry, which again is not something uh, trivial to see, but, uh, but uh, if, if you do the exchange of u and u dagger and then you multiply all these equations on the left and on the right by u and u dagger, you will recover the same thing, except that you will have to permute all the derivatives and you will get, uh, uh, I mean, this thing is going to be, to be uh, invariant under, uh, you get a minus sign and you get a minus sign from the epsilon, so mm -hmm. basically you will get, uh, sorry, here, parity just to make it clear, it's, it's really the, the physical, uh, the, the Space dimension that you really work, right? What's the time? Good. Okay, so this would be the, the equation of motion we would like to have in a theory like this, uh, but uh, very good. There is one problem: is that there is no Lagrangian that can give you that can give you this by uh, this differentiation. Is uh, it's very simple. It's, you can try to write down a Lagrangian with an epsilon tensor in this theory, and all terms you can write down will vanish actually. You write something like this. Uh, I mean, the only thing you, you could write is basically this thing: mu u mu dagger zero u d sigma u dagger. 
right? But this thing is actually zero. By, uh, because this thing is, is symmetric in, uh, in lower Lorentz indices, and this one is also symmetric. And if you take the, you can add, I mean, I'm not sure that this is very easy to see, but you can add u, u dagger, and then permute this derivative here, this one here, and something like this. You can play a bit with this term and, and check that, uh, that it's in to be uh, and otherwise, there is no, no other way to, to write the term with, uh, with an epsilon term. So what uh, I could do is do, do two traces, but the problem is the same thing. Or I uh, put a trace here and whatever. Whatever I do, these things are, are vanishing. So there is no way to get one of these terms for just a form from a four dimensional land, from a local term in the Lagrangian. But then uh, it's where uh, actually. Uh, West Domino and uh, West Would, and Domino and Witten enter. Wouldn't you also need uh, five views in the Lagrangian to generate that term? Yeah, you would need you would need five, but uh, I mean, if you have five u, I mean, if you have only four derivatives, you you can have four. You have only four u actually, because yes. you're, I mean, you cannot have an odd number of u's, so you need exactly. the u and the u dagger. But then you can permute the u and the u dagger, and you can get rid of them. So you, when you have four derivatives, I mean, if you want, it's a, it's a property of these uh, of these u that they always come in, in even numbers. So, mm -hmm. and they can you can have only at most one more u than the number of derivatives. Right? So with four derivatives, you can only have four u, and uh, there's no way to to get something. And we said a bit last time. If, if I have more fields, yes, can I do something? Ah, yeah, then uh, it's a okay. story. But now uh, we really have that this is. Uh, I'm limited to the U only. To the U only, it's it's, uh, it's very different if you have other fields. You have uh, spin one or whatever. You can you can write them with an epsilon. Then I can. You can you can break uh, this symmetry by hand. But you know, at low energy in QCD is all we have. It's only the pions. In principle, if you look below a certain energy, well, of course we know that there is more. Uh, yeah, exactly. But well. Um, yes. Okay. And the, the, the answer to the to this uh, this puzzle is actually to write down to add a term that is not uh, that you cannot write. Let's say I, I'm going to call this gamma. Add the term gamma. Sorry, which is let's say differently. Yeah, at the level of the action, because you cannot write it's a Lagrangian term that will give you this. But at the level of the action, what you can do is to say there is this uh, this skirm or even chiral of Lagrangian everything. You can add more term. You have this thing, and then if you, let's add another term that I call capital gamma, where this gamma is. Uh, the integral, let me normalize it to a big number. And then an integral over five dimensional space, M5 of, of the quantity and then with the epsilon tensor in five dimension, which looks something very baroque that you don't want to do, but, uh, but actually, why not? And this, uh, this thing is uh, what is called the uh, West Domino Witten action or West Domino Witten term. Okay, and why, what is, uh, how is it defined? Let's say we, it's defined on a five dimensional um, space that is such that the boundary of this, this five dimensional space is, is the visual Minkowski or the Minkowski space. Okay. And uh, okay. why, why uh, is this uh, at all a good thing uh, to do in a theory? It's because, actually, if you take the variation of this, this gamma and their, with respect to some field, it's always a total derivative in, in 5D. So this is older than domain wall and extra dimensions. Sorry? This is older than domain wall and extra dimensions. 
Yes, it, it, well, older. I don't, I don't know when, how old the extra dimensions are because the Kaluza line is, uh, yeah. is quite old, I mean, uh, in theory. But uh, this is, um, actually, this is the West Domino Lagrangian is already, uh, is quite old. And then Witten realized that you need to have this also uh, in QCD if you want. No, it's not true, actually. To match the. Uh, no, I'm not totally sure. But like if Francesco was here, he probably knew more about the, the historical thing. But I think this this was added by Weston Tumino to the Lagrangian of QCD to match the anomalies, which we are going to see. And then we, what Witten did was to uh, to show that actually this this coefficient that I call n is actually an integer has to be an integer. But why is it like okay? This thing looks horrible because basically we have an action that is a 4D action and we have a 5D thing. But, but whatever we do, the physics, when you take the variation of this action, it's always going to be a total derivative and you can integrate over the 5D space and it will give you a boundary term that is purely 4D. So the physics from this term is totally four dimensional. This is, it's non local, that's, that's the problem. I mean, the problem. Or the beauty or whatever. Um, yes, let's just buy. You, you see, for instance, if you compute the equation of motion, you get exactly a term that by taking one derivative with, with respect to u, you will get the, the kind of terms that we, we want to. Okay. Um, of course, there is a, a constraint on this. You don't want the physics to depend on, on your, the choice of your 5D, uh, 5D space. And this is where uh, where Witten show basically that uh, that uh, yeah. what, what you want is that gamma if you take, if you take it on a space n, on space n five or on uh, a different space n five prime you you would like that it doesn't change the action so you want that this gives you a two pi times some some real uh, number. Some, uh, sorry, integer number. So if you just get a factor of 2 pi in the action, uh, it's just, uh, oh, sorry, yeah. You want this thing to be just a factor of 2 pi in the action. So that uh, everything is fine. Good. And um, actually, so this thing is just the left hand side, you can just write the gamma. Of and five, and uh, yes, because so the, the the picture is a bit complicated, but let's let's go down to a bit less dimension to to visualize what's what's going on. Let's say that uh, we do field theory on uh, on on this uh, two-dimensional surface here, and uh, and then uh, basically. What we say is that there is a term in, in the theory that we have to define on the on the 3D uh, thing that, that goes around. So that where the boundary of this this 3D thing is, is the this two dimensional surface here. The point is by by taking this or I could take another thing on the other side or whatever, I should always get the same thing when I integrate over the five, fifth dimension. And uh, so what we can show is basically you can you can take two. Uh, I mean, you want when you take the the union of of these two surfaces where, where that have the same boundary that is Minkowski space. Uh, it's shown that actually this, if you take a, a five sphere in, in the space of, of this uh, in this S U N space, basically this is, this is going to give you uh, two pi. Times uh, times an integer, which is exactly what we want. This is going to give you something like this. Ah, oh, sorry. No, well, on on a vice pair, it gives you uh, two pi. This this quantity. So two pi ten. So basically, the only way this thing is totally well defined if you say that this coefficient of the West Domino Witten term is a, is an integer. This is just mathematically well defined. There's no physics in, in here so far. But okay, I, I don't want to to go. Too much into this because it's a bit uh, baroque. What is the matrix signature in the fifth dimension? Sorry? What is the matrix signature in the fifth dimension? Ah, it's Minkowski. What? 
So that's my. Oh, the, you don't care. There is no metric actually. Sorry. This is a, this is a good point. It's it's a topological term, so it's independent of the metric. If you want, you can take whatever five D manifold that has the the four D Minkowski boundary. There is there is no five D metric there. This is a way you can do that. Uh, good. You have to you have to buy a bit this this was to me no with an action as it is but uh, yes it has a number of uh, of uh, important properties maybe first thing let me just show you that from this thing you get, get indeed the you get indeed the the k on k on to three pi dk you know, because what you can do is Write this u d mu u dagger. Do the, the expansion in terms of of pions, and uh, and this is just uh, this is just i over f pi d mu pi a times the uh, generator of uh, we we are in SUI, so it's any generator of of uh, SUI. Or let me just call this new capital pi. Or capital pi is a, it's just a, is as you are in a field that parameterizes all the pions. So you see that if I plot this thing, I could I can decide to rewrite uh, this thing adding u and u dagger all the place. I can rewrite all of this in terms of terms like this, and, uh, and what I get is that this gamma is proportional. To an integral over five dimensional space. And then uh, it's a trace of mu pi mu Okay, something like this. And uh, it's proportional to one over that pi to the fifth, and so on. I don't care too much about this concept. And you see that this thing actually, I can rewrite all of this. I can take the derivative out. Actually, I can rewrite this as d mu and all of this because when the derivative acts on this with the epsilon tensor, it vanishes. So this is just a trick. So it's, it's indeed a total derivative. And uh, then what I can do on this term is actually just to integrate over this thing and just get the four-dimensional thing on this. I just do the, the integration, integration by part knowing that the boundary of 25 is, is four-dimensional in Kofi space. Good. So when I do the expansion of, of these special 5D terms, actually it's, it's purely four-dimensional four in terms of the files. So just the problem, if you want, is just this matrix U notation of the of the pion field does not allow you to to write these terms that can actually be there if you want to write explicitly in terms of the pions. But of course, you get infinitely many. So there is no way to. I mean, yeah, if you want, you have this term, but you have terms with many more pions or so that. Yeah. And this thing uh, has uh, exactly five five pion fields. And for the risk, even from five yeah. pion fields, you get exactly what. It's anti symmetric, so you, you never get twice the same the same field, but but you can get this k plus k minus going to pi plus pi zero pi minus. There is another thing that you see from here. It's actually, from uh, if you are in SU two, you have only three different fields. So. Of these five, some of them will have to be identical. And actually, this thing vanishes for SU2. So for SU2, you cannot, this, this West Domino Witten term is actually vanishing. Which is something annoying. So this is why now, actually, I will do and bigger than three. What happened to the last index on the epsilon tensor? Oh, uh, well, okay, it, it was there before the integration, but then when you integrate, I mean, Yes. You can write this as as a five four basically. Yeah. So when you integrate uh, five form, you get the four 
So you get or, so you just get rid of, of okay. Okay. because it's an epsilon. This is also yeah. what you could not do if you had the metric here. Mm. But since it's purely topological, you, you just yeah. get rid of it. I'm so still not understand this thing about the metric. I mean, you need to give me what the metric. You, you, you don't even need to have plus, a metric plus, on plus five. Or you don't. It's arbitrary. It's arbitrary. It's, arbitrary. it's, arbitrary. it's, it's there, but it's arbitrary. Yeah. I mean, the same as the other space dimensions. Sorry? It's the same as the other spatial dimensions. Yeah, but they didn't tell you what is minus. Is there, there is no, no, no metric even on that. The boundary but, has to be Minkowski. But exactly. The boundary has to be Minkowski. Whatever metric. Uh, you take a space that, that has a boundary that has a Minkowski metric. Yeah. The way you, you realize this is, is arbitrary. Good. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Let uh, let me do uh, another thing with this term. So so far, I mean, this uh, for for those of you who are in this uh, thing is what we are discussing. This was to me a little term that that gives a number of uh, interesting uh, interaction. Um, yeah. So um, very good. So what we can do, if you want another thing that will convince you that uh, this thing has no, I mean, is, is just an artifact of not writing down these, uh, these terms with the U matrix, and is actually only four dimensional, is, is to take the um, variation. I mean, let's let's have a look at the the other currents that, uh, of this of this theory, and uh, let's say that. We have we have this uh, vector uh, S U N uh, vector symmetry. If you want that, transform um, U as something that is proportional to the commutator of U with some S U N matrix. Right. This is just the definition of S U N vector transformation. So the same as the U is uh, something that is V. Maybe the exponential of some parameter theta a or theta times q, right? To the infinitesimal form of the transformation, and uh, I can look at what the the Nether current is from from this, this transformation. Let's forget about this part because this is the usual uh, the usual thing. But let's look at what happens. Uh, what is the current current that you get from from this west to mean weekly term? Let's call it the west to mean Okay. And this is of course depends on the generator we are looking at. What you get is n over forty eight pi square, and then the maximum tensor. I already did the integration there. Uh, by part from the 5D to the 4D because you get something like this. I just give you the, the answer, right? And then it's again an exercise at home for those of you who want to, to see how this goes. Right, this trace minus the trace with the U, 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 U driver, 0, U, this U, U driver. Okay. This is the the other current that you get for uh, for uh, uh, transformation that is generated by by the, by the generator Q. Okay, and this thing is four dimensional. So this is the physics that you get out of this term, which is four dimensional. And why is this this interesting? It's very interesting actually because uh, it happens that. Whatever SUN generator you plug in into here, this thing is going to vanish. And this, I have no proof of this, but uh, uh, I don't know exactly how it works. But you can try. <laughs> but okay, this is not the, the, the interesting thing is, is now let's take a sec, but the generator actually, uh, let's take it to be the identity matrix, which is not a generator of SUN, but a generator of UN. So there is no problem in saying um, my Lagrangian from the beginning is, is UN. 
And if you check the, the identity, actually what you get, let me erase the looking curve, is you get something very strange. Is that now we are talking about making a, a transformation, if you want, e to the i times a phase, u e to the i minus a phase, which is uh, obviously saying that, that u is equal is going to u, right? So there is no variation. So this seems to be totally trivial. But if you do this at the level of the Westminster Witten term, from this thing you get something that is non-zero actually. Namely, you have to exchange the move the you can move the derivative, and what you get, both terms will, will contribute to the same, sorry. G you put the identity here, which is just n over 24 pi squared trace of g dagger e u u dagger e sigma u. Okay. Very good. So actually there is there is a although the symmetry is totally not visible at the level of the Lagrangian because it's not changing the, the u. It is uh, it has some physical implication, implications, which is that uh, sorry you generate uh, you have another current associated with this symmetry. Something very very unusual because right usually you, I mean, you don't change the field of obviously you don't have another current, but uh, it's it's uh, something that comes out. Here, because uh, the theory is non local. If you want, the Lagrangian the, the is non local. And why is this uh, interesting? Is this thing, you know, with every another current, there is, a, there is a charge associated to it. And the charge, I'm going to call it uh, QB, is just the integral on a space of G, G0, right? Or Q. And if you do just oh sorry, of course there is the term tensor here. E neuro sigma exactly. When you take the zero, zero component of this, you just get all the, the space uh, indices here. Mm -hmm. So you get di and dj dk if you want. So if you do the integral of this thing, it's exactly equal to this one in our case. So this is supposed to be the twenty-four. Because, yeah, okay. So, the thing that you get here is you get n times b, which was the winding number. So, actually, the charge associated to the, the, this current is just the baryon number. And what is this, this? I mean, this transformation, if you want, at the level of u, we're doing nothing, but if you think in terms of, of quarks, it's just the u1 vector. Uh, symmetry of the model, which is the baryon number. What's the, uh, the what's the n? N is this, this coefficient of the West Domino Witten term. That okay. so far we only know that it has to be an integer. Okay. And then there is another thing. Is uh, of course here I put the identity, but uh, I could say that this transform with some. Uh, some factor, so well, I can get any other factor. But, okay, the, the important thing is the, the charge associated to this transformation that seems trivial is actually the, the, the bar number, the, the winding number of the field. And uh, yeah, what's, what does it mean actually? It means that because this, okay, this transformation, you know that U, the field U, we know actually that from the underlying theory is, is uh, something that is like q bar q, right? Is, is a diquark field, more or less. And, uh, and this symmetry is exactly the symmetry that, that is transforming q into, into the pi, sorry, q, which is the u1 vectorial symmetry of, of, uh, of the theory. So at the quark level, there is a symmetry that, that totally disappears 
uh, when you write down the theory of mesons. I mean, it's just doing nothing to, to your theory, except for the West Domino Witness where, uh, where it's still there. And, uh, yeah. and this theory is, is nothing but variable numbers, right? Because it's transforming the, the Q in this thing and the Q bar in the other yeah, so minus one plus. This, this symmetry is a barrier number. So what, what uh, I'm saying with this derivation is that actually the barrier number charge is proportional to the winding number of your field. So when you take a field like this one that has a non-zero winding number, you get some barrier number. The soliton is, is an object in your uh, theory of, of meson that carries a barrier, that carries a barrier number. So you have a theory only of mesons where you don't see at all that that uh, you have a baryon number symmetry, but it's there. The, the, why you don't see it is because U does not transform at all under this. But by writing this non-local term, actually, you recover that this, this symmetry is there, and the charge of this symmetry is just the winding number. So this is the the hint. This is what uh, what made the Witten made the claim that uh, that the the solitons of the mesonic theory here are actually barons of QCD, mm -hmm. which so far still look a bit uh, I mean, confusing. No? I mean, because the, the only thing we know is that we have an object that is localized that has a given energy or something like this. Does nothing. Doesn't look at all like like a baryon, like a multi quark bound state. But yeah. So these the skermions the skermion, uh, yeah carry a baryon number. That's a, an important an important thing. But baryon number is still conserved. It's conserved, yeah. And it's why it's why also this, this charge is, is conserved. This is a thing that you see from this theory, this is conserved by uh, topology if you want. And this corresponds in the in the theory of quarks to to uh, to uh, a charge that is conserved by because it's uh, it's the another uh, charge of, of a good symmetry of the theory. So I guess uh, baryon number violating processes are allowed here or not? Here they're not allowed because I didn't put gauge field. If I if I it is what I want to discuss at the end today a little bit is if you gauge this, you see this thing if you decide to replace this by a, by a covariant derivative uh, it's not necessarily a topological quantity anymore, this thing. It's, it's not gauge invariant. So in the absence of gauge field, baryon is totally stable. So there are no baryon ba number violating process. There is no baryon number violating process. You know that the baryon number violating processes are a spider round, which involve the... the yeah, wind. related to topological, related to instanton. They are related to instanton, so, but this instanton is a, is a gauge, is a soliton of the gauge field, and so it's a uh, topological... Uh, Object of the gauge field. So as long as you have no gauge field, this this thing is totally stable, and this corresponds to the C. So yeah. So this was the little discussion about the this um, about this West Domino Witten term, which is a very uh, confusing uh, topic. But okay. There is a last thing uh, that we have we have to. To see is actually what Esben was asking. What is this n? Because we we saw from uh, I mean Witten showed that this has to be a, an integer. Just otherwise the, the thing is the object is not well defined. But uh, it can be anything. And how do we do that? Is actually there there are two ways. One that I know and one that I don't know. So uh, I'm going to use the one I know. Although the other one might be nicer, but. Uh, one, I mean, let, let me tell you the, the way I don't know how to, to do it now on the platform. <laughs> <laughs> ah, is that, uh, I mean, it's not that I don't know, but yeah, okay. It's a bit more and more complicated. One thing is you want the anomalies of the underlying theory to match the anomalies of the, of the, you want the infrared theory, which is this one, to match the anomaly of the UV theory, which is the, the quark model. And uh, I mean, QCD, yeah. So QCD has, has uh, the axial anomaly, and this model written in terms of this has, has no axial, has no anomaly at all. And the way you do this is uh, you couple the, you have to couple the, the anomaly. 
Toft showed that, that indeed the, the, the anomaly must be preserved independently of the, the RG flow. Right? It's, uh, the anomaly of the UV and the anomaly of the infrared must be the same. And the only way that this happens is actually to say that this, this thing that I call small n is actually the number of color of, of US UN theory. Okay. And this is not easy to do if you want to well, Okay, and if you the, 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 the way I know is, is really, the way I know is, is, is very simple is to to add actually the the electromagnetism to this theory. So let's gauge let's gauge you uh, one electromagnetism and see what happens. So how do we add the, the gauge fields? It's at the level of this diagram and it's very simple. Right? Is to say we just replace the, the derivative with covariant derivative work. We say d mu u is just d mu u minus i the electric charge, that's called GVM e, and then uh, the gauge field times some generator q commutator of generator q on u. That's the use the covariant derivative. And the same thing here. This is the way to gauge a, a Lagrangian, a local Lagrangian, no problem. So now this is done. Now for the West Amino Witten term, it's a bit more complicated because I, I cannot just extend this, uh, just gauge the five, five dimensional. Then I, I need, if I need to, to gauge the, the five dimension, I need to specify what is the gauge field in the fifth dimension. And this is not something we want to do because actually the the West Amino Witten term is not gauge invariant, but its gauge variation is, is something four dimensional. So basically we can kill all of the West Amino Witten terms um, gauge dependence by adding four dimensional uh, terms. And this is instead of of considering this, this gamma that I had before, let me take now a gamma tilde, which is going to be the gauge version, which is the same as before, it's this five dimensional integral, but then minus a four dimensional integral that is just g mu and then uh, this, this current g mu of q, if you want. So the, you see, this the variation of, of this is going to cancel the, the variation of the the leading variation of the West Amino Witten term under regauge transformation because under regauge transformation u is is going to uh, uh, to something I mean a mu and u transform uh, the opposite direction but but this is not enough so actually uh, let me give you the answer to this, this problem, which is d square by 24 by square mu mu a rho, and then trace q square dagger Minus Q, 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 So this thing that is going over three lines here, that body is a little small for me. Um, if I take instead of, of this 5D um, term that I had before, is modify one that has now, in addition to the, the thing I had, things with one, uh, one or or two uh, gauge field. So this thing is obviously not gauge invariant because there is the, the gauge potential uh, just like this. But the gauge variation of this thing and of this thing will, will cancel exactly. But now in gamma you have covariant derivatives or not? In gamma, no, I don't have covariant derivatives. I don't, so exactly, the gamma is the same as uh, the original one. 
So you never need to specify a5. Never appears. No. The, because the variation under to check that this thing is, is gauge invariant, you just do a gauge transformation of, of u if you want in here. And you will get something, but that is going to be a total derivative that you can integrate that is four-dimensional. And then the gauge of, uh, the gauge variation of all these parts on the right cancel exactly the gauge transformation of this. And this is for uh, this valid for this u1 uh, this u1 field here. So if you take SU2 in general, you have many more terms. You have eleven terms that you need to here. There are one, two, well, three terms depending on how you count. You have plenty of terms that you have to write, but the variation, the gauge transformation of, of gamma is always something four dimensional that you can cancel through uh, adding four dimensional terms. But you see two other sort of things that you cannot write in the theory because they're not gauge invariant in general. But their gauge uh, transformation cancel exactly the gauge transformation of this thing. So is, is the gauge transform version of. So, I'm sorry, um, you say, is it. The gauge transform part of gamma, or what am I call the gauge anomaly of gamma? I'm not sure yeah, that's actually well, the correct word. Well, no, well, okay. uh, anyway, what you get when you make a gauge transform of gamma, which yeah. is not gamma, yeah. does that cancel out with that, with the other term plus its gauge transformation, or just the gauge transformation? If you want the gauge transformation of gamma cancel with this part, mm -hmm. but this part has a gauge transformation. Yeah. I mean, that cancel one part is canceling the gamma, but then you get something that as two a's basically. Yeah. Because this uh, thing is, yeah. and this is why you need to add this term. Yeah. To cancel this, and then magically when you do this, then uh, everything is gauge invariant. So this is the way. Okay. Uh, this is the way uh, you, you you do it basically. You compute the gauge transformation of this thing, and then uh, yeah, you, you you want to cancel by adding a term, which is basically only the, is going to be just the the other current terms mm -hmm. in you. But then you need to cancel the variation of this thing, which uh, you need to add more. Yeah. And if you do this for the full thing, you will get plenty of terms. Actually. And then it ends up closing up nicely. It closes up uh, very nicely. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah. Okay. Um, and so what? This, this also means that the gauge, uh, the gauge invariant version of the Vesemina Witten term yeah. does not imply anything different from what the uh, the non gauge. Uh, the non gauge version does. I mean, there's no new physics in. There is the physics that is there actually, which is now you have interaction of the of the gauge field with uh, with this thing mm -hmm. that has the four uh, pions, or like two gauge fields with uh, two uh, one pion actually. You know, this thing, and this this term exactly. If you take this, it has two gauge field. And this thing is exactly one pi on. And this gives actually the, the pi to gamma gamma coupling that gives mm. the, the, the decay pi to two photon in, that is there in the standard model. And by looking only at this thing and gauging the, the uh, yeah, electromagnetism, you will never get a pi to gamma gamma. Because even when this thing is gauged, there is still this symmetry that say that you always have two pions at the same time, so four pions or six pions, but never a pion. Mm -hmm. And it's only adding in terms that you get the pi to gamma gamma, which is the, the main decay of, of the pi, the pi zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this term does physics, and it's, it's, uh, and it's also a term that when you do a BS in uh, physics like technical or like models or something like this, is all, is very important because uh, Sometimes if you just write down a Lagrangian like this for, for the electroweak uh, breaking and, and you you find you you can have an object that is totally stable, like the like the pion would be actually in uh, in the absence of, of this thing. While actually this this part of the term will give you a pion okay, yeah. Good. And uh, yeah. And now from this, you see that uh, in the action, all these things is multiplied by uh, these, uh, these small n that I had before. And we know what is the pi to gamma gamma coupling from QCD in principle, uh, and for experiment. And then we can match. And this only works again if we put the n equal to the number of colors. 
It's the same thing because the, what's the same thing as the way I don't know if you want to, is is to say that uh, that uh, because this this uh, decay is, is just the anomaly. Basically. You can say gamma instead of being a physical field, you can say it's just uh, an external source that I use to check the anomaly. Mm. So basically, I, I just did the part. I, <laughs> no, I mean, in the sense that doing the Toft um, anomaly matching condition is just equivalent. I mean, the anomaly is there, but you need a probe field uh, to probe it. And is, you can say either, either you said this gamma is physical, and then I look at the physical decay, I, I see that n is equal to nc, or I just look at the anomaly of this uh, the u1 uh, axial with two u1. Uh, uh, vector that is this one, and then uh, you see that uh, you must have this n that is equal to nc. So this is important because here. So you mean the triangle anomaly? The triangle anomaly, yeah, yeah. Which is the one? Yeah, well, there are other anomalies that uh, are in the theory, but, uh, but yeah, good. So uh, what were we saying is that basically the, the baryon number now is something that is the number of colors times the winding number. But there is something uh, wrong in this because actually the, wind, the baryon number of, of a quark is not 1 in QCD. But OK, it's a matter of a convention. Yeah. But let's call it baryon, which is usually a baryon. So in QCD, uh, the baryon number is, let's say, is, is uh, one. one third, right? But okay, this is just a matter of convention. But let me say, in general, it's one over n c, right? So let's divide this by n c. The important point is that here should not the generator of this is not the identity, but the identity over n c. And uh, so here I get one over n c, and here I get one over n c. And it's beautiful because then. <laughs> I mean, this NC and this NC. I mean, it, if you want, it, it's a bit, okay, it's a bit uh, and wavy, but it, anyway, it's a convention, what you call baryon number. We, we, used to, we are used to say that the baryon number of, of a quark is, is one third because the, what we call a baryon is what is called, made of three quarks, but uh, okay. There is something that relates the, the winding number to the baryon number. In the, with the usual definition, it's exactly the same. The bar number is the winding number. And this is independent of, on, of the number of color. I don't know what the time is. Oh, okay, maybe I should do a little break. Just before, there is a last thing, which was what we discussed also with, with Diego a few times, right? So that we, used to, we used to say that the, the phi on decay to gamma, gamma is used to here, that actually by measuring, measuring the, the phi on decay to gamma, gamma, you, you know how many quarks there are in, in the theory. And this is not true, actually, because, you know, from, from this, this term, actually, you get exactly what, uh, what uh, uh, is actually the cancellation that is happening, happening here, is that what is, what is the, the generator of electromagnetism in this theory? Is the matrix Q is the charge of the quarks, right? It's two thirds and minus one third. I cannot allow the, the strange quarks so that there's no, no problem here. But uh, since we look at uh, the pi zero, it's on the, the upper left column that, that is important. So this is uh, the thing in, in QCD, but in general, this, this thing. You see what it is? It's just the generator of isospin. Basically, which is like one half isospin one half for the up and isospin minus one half for the down and minus one half for the strain. Plus some number that is the hypercharge one six of the quarks times the identity. Yeah? Okay. And uh, in general, in QCD, if we didn't know anything about QCD but just the, the pions, we would not know either what, what is this number here. Right? So this could be any number. We don't know the, the theory of quarks. So technically, let me say, okay, assume that there, the, the, there are five quarks. And I write here one over five. 
So five quarks with a bit exotic uh, charges. But uh, when you plug this Q into this thing, you need one, this Q square actually, one of the Q you need it to be the isospin because otherwise the trace with this thing is going to be zero. Because this thing is, is a, an object that, uh, that actually is, is SU2, is SUN, uh, is in the SUN algebra. So you need one of this and one of this thing to not cancel. And then the other, you, you take the identity and it's one over NC. So the coefficient of, of the pi to gamma gamma is down by one over NC from this term. And then there is the, the other factor of NC that is multiplying the, the whole term. So actually the pi to gamma gamma, if you take the hypercharge of the quark to be one over NC, is uh, is like like in the in the standard model is is independent of, of NC. So it's true that if you say that you know the charge of the quark of the quarks, then from the pi to gamma gamma, you know the number of colors. Yeah. But you, by know, you want to cancel the gauge anomaly in the uh, the weak part. Of the this is exactly, but this is the weak. I mean, in principle, it's a different. It's from you know only looking at the pions. There is no, you, you don't know. For, okay, for so Vashov made the, the hypercharge assignment uh, by exactly. cancelling the. But for this, you, you need to know. But then you, know, you need to know the, the theory. You need to know because, you know, I mean, for QCD. Why, what do you need to know? You don't need to know that the QCD is SU3. Uh, you only need to know how many fermions you have. Yeah, but. The families. You don't need to know that QCD is SU3. No, but, okay, for QCD, I don't know actually how. Well, okay. This thing, we know from other uh, arguments that the number of colors has to be three, but if you apply this now to a technicolor theory, actually, or something like this, where, how would you know what is the, the number of color of the underlying gauge theory? By looking at the, at the pi or, or some Gaussian boson decaying to gamma gamma alone, you don't know this. What you can do is by looking at, at two different processes. Because uh, here you have this thing with Q squared, here you have this with Q. So by looking at different processes, you, you can extract this thing. But just the pi to gamma gamma, or, or uh, yeah, that okay. Higgs to gamma gamma would be, well, okay, it's not Higgs, it's not a goal. So, but okay, there are uh, theories where you get stuff like this, but it's not totally clear that, uh, that, you, that yeah. you get this. Okay. Good. Um, should, should we take a five minute break? And, uh, yeah. Mikhail, why do you say you don't?